You are welcome again to my channel. I am Fama Tanto, and today I am here in Dibombari, somewhere in the littoral region, to meet one of the greatest agricultural entrepreneurs of our time. You know, it's a young man who is changing the narrative of agriculture. Thank you for always coming back to my channel. Thank you for always watching my videos. Remember, I told you agriculture is the future of Africa and there is wealth in the soil. 60% of our soils in Africa is unexploited and it is arable, man. And this guy is changing the narratives by exploiting the soil. And we're going to stop importation of agricultural produce from other parts of the world because here in Cameroon, the soil is very productive. Just join me as we are going to meet this guy and you won't regret watching this video. Hello viewers, I'm here to meet an amazing young entrepreneur. I see. I said he's the greatest entrepreneur of our time, you know? <laughs> you <say> that, right? <laughs> Roland, good to see you, man. Have been... my, my pleasure. Thank, thanks for having me. And welcome been... to our farm. Thank you so much, <laughs> man. We've been texting like for about two or three years. Yeah, 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 and yeah. this is like the perfect opportunity for me to come see you. Exactly, exactly. So now, um, my name is Famatanto, as you already know. So I'm a grassroots activist on environment, agriculture. I was amazed seeing how you know, you started your farm, I've been following you up, and today I said, let me come and capture the real things that you are doing on the ground for the world to see, you know. So, how did you conceive the vision of Greenhouse? Well, the the idea about Greenhouses was born from all the problems that we're facing in the, you know, in our work at the time. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, my background is technology development, okay. not agriculture. So you don't have to. you don't have any background in agriculture. No, no. I, well, I didn't go to school to study agriculture. I never okay. studied agriculture. I never sat in any classroom and studied agriculture. I learned agriculture like you will learn on YouTube, you will learn on the field, you will learn from people. But that was how I I learned it. So the passion drove me towards what we are doing right now, what you see right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So were you just here in the country doing all of this, or you? No, no, no. Well, I, I did my studies in the United States. Okay. Um, there I had a, a degree in technology development or yeah. technology entrepreneurship, as, yeah. as they call it. And uh, at the time, we realized, okay, there are already too many solutions out there that are not being deployed. That's right. Uh, Africa, for example, has too many problems that okay. are not being solved, right? Okay. And uh, how do we connect? The solutions that we've created in the western world and apply them to the problems that we actually have mm -hmm. on this part of the continent so mm -hmm. uh and that was what led us on the field of discovery um our first technology was a solar dehydrator okay from there we had the solar dryers solar cookers cook stoves green charcoal uh, we even have a, had a corn sheller. uh but then we realized that uh uh, most of the technologies that we developed, which were to be sold in the rural areas, yeah. uh, to individuals who were mostly farmers, mm -hmm. could not really afford our technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, we either had to depend on subsidies from the government, we either had to go for grants. I know those, they are not sustainable in either way. That's right. So we came up with the idea now, how can we create a solution that actually impacts farmers That's in right. two ways. One, could improve production to increase profitability that's right and that's how the idea of the low-cost climate smart uh, greenhouses came to be wow. so 2014 we installed our very first greenhouse mm -hmm. i mean it's uh it's made out of bamboo very this amateurish you know greenhouse <laughs> yeah and the idea you know kind of stemmed from there um yeah. from there we went to wooden greenhouses to what you see now which are more metallic uh, greenhouses and more durable and more sustainable 
Wow. Um, and uh, initially, we thought we would only become a technology company. But, you know, as we developed the technology, we started producing people, use them to produce more. They wanted to produce more. They could only come back to us who were the pioneers. Mm -hmm. um, so now we had a very huge demand and we actually got into production. Wow. So you see us now, we develop the technology, we mm -hmm. produce, produce, uh, we train individuals in greenhouse right. and sustainable agriculture. And we also provide consultancy for even outdoor farms because we work with several experts from okay. different parts of the world, Kenya, okay. Ghana, Cameroon, and so forth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, let me come back to how long were you in the States? I, uh, I spent, um, I would say, about uh, 10 years. 10 years uh, in the United in, States. In the United States, yeah. So now, before thinking to come to Cameroon, did you visualize that you were going to be up to this level? Well, um, I knew that I would do something important someday. Okay. Uh, I think I'd always had that conviction. Uh, what it was, I didn't know yet. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, but I've always believed in the road to discovery which I'm on. So one thing led to the other, to the other, to the other, to where we are today. And this is this is not even the end. I think we are we are more or less really now getting started. I think the, I mean, the most amazing aspects of it would be what you will see after this. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So how many green farms have you established so far? Um, in total, we have built over 500 greenhouses, individual greenhouses. 500? Uh, yeah, yeah, 500. All over the country? All over the country, even beyond. We've built in uh, Ivory Coast. Okay. We've built in, uh, in, in, in Nigeria. We're actually building in Guinea Conakry uh, right now. Uh, even in Kutira, Guinea, we, wow. we are looking to enter into this area. Wow. So, a part of the greenhouse farms, you know, what other uh, agricultural produce, products do you, well, do you produce? Well, yeah. my, my, my idea has always been to establish an integrated farm. Okay. Um, having solely greenhouses doesn't really cut across. So, okay. uh, like where we are, you will realize that it's. <laughs> We, we have chickens, we okay. have pigs, we grow plantains, uh, and it depends what part of the country. In the north, we have cashew nuts. Wow. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we have sesame. We, we have all the things that we do based on the climatic uh, adaptations in that particular area. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what's the surface area of this farm? Because uh, this city is so huge. Yeah, this one, this is the largest single greenhouse farm we have. It measures 720 square meters. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see from the area view, the surface area is so huge with the plantains, the chickens. Okay. You know, what's yes, like the, the surface the, the area? The total land here, we are exploiting on uh, 13 hectares at the 13 moment. Hectares. Yeah, 13 hectares? Wow. So how many workers do you have? <laughs> it's a tricky question, simply because uh, uh, we have several individuals, uh, okay. but since they work at different parts, at different times, in different domains, yeah. Um, I would not even tell you. I have interns who come with me at every time. So we have a team that is involved in construction engineers. We have okay. a team that is involved in marketing and sales. We have an administrative team for accounting and general management. You have the farm managers in different farms. You have the construction guys. So, uh, <laughs> Do you know why I'm laughing? <laughs> I thought I studied agriculture, you know, but now I'm seeing agriculture now in a different dimension, especially from you. Who has never sit in the four walls in my agricultural room? No, this is mind blowing. It's going to, it's going to challenge all the young people out there who just sit and fold their arms and think that agriculture is for poor people, you know. Uh, but anyway, I was trained as an extension worker, you know, to go and teach farmers how to work. And even though I work in diverse fields, in environment, clean water, but man, you, <laughs> man, you, you amaze me, man. This is no, this is you, unbelievable. This is mind blowing, you. no? Thank you. So now. When you were coming back from the United States to set up the greenhouse, the green ventures, did you have any challenges like with your friends or did, do you regret coming back or no? Do you like have conflicts with your friends who are like, hey, you live in America to come back to Africa, you know, it's bullshit. So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you see, once you are an entrepreneur, there is a different mindset that you tend to have, okay. you know. Uh, of course, moving back home was the most difficult thing I think I ever had to do. Yeah. Um, but I think I have enjoyed every experience and I still do enjoy every experience. Um, simply because I think every challenge has actually led us to a new step, a new way, and probably a new product or a new way of doing business, you see. Mm -hmm. So 
with all the challenges that came from i mean i had a time where a minister told me that greenhouses are not meant for cameroon so imagine if the minister of agriculture tells you that you believe there is no and he's right. a minister of agriculture yeah, and this is somebody who claimed that he had lived abroad he, he understood everything he worked for the un the world bank so uh, but if you took his word, then we would not be where we are. But he gave me a challenge, which he didn't know that he helped me. Yeah. He said, the day I would make a greenhouse work in the economic capital of Douala, where we are, yeah. he would make it approved for the entire country. Oh my uh, we're in Douala right now, we're in a greenhouse, and you can see around us, we have the produce, but unfortunately, he's no longer on seat. Oh, man. Uh, so we have those challenges. We had challenges from, you know, how do you go to America and then come back to become a farmer, you know, like... And probably you don't, I probably haven't told you this. I was a pharmacy major. Okay. So I was studying pharmacy. You're I studying did, pharmacy. Yeah, I did pharmacy for three years. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I did I did pharmacy for three years. Yeah. And I had two more years to go. And mm -hmm. uh, I had to ask myself, do I really want to do this? Okay. Um, I had always wanted to come back home. And I told myself, if I finish with a degree in pharmacy, it would take me longer. To graduate yeah. in the u.s to move back i mean graduating means leaving the u.s and moving to cameroon because it will mean i have to work there get some money and build credit and all of that before moving to cameroon to install and all of that i wasn't really ready for that um, wow. wow so i had to divert my attention i dropped pharmacy i tried public health because yeah. i thought maybe i could do public health and do the who and all of that but I realized I would still be under a structure confined to a system. I said, then I moved into agriculture. It was a place, no rules applied. You had the chance to create your own rules, yeah, that's create right. your own rules. And the opportunity was humongous. You know, you're moving back to Cameroon. You are not moving back to compete with other people, you know? Mm -hmm. Because the challenge some of us get here is that when you move from out there, you come here, you become a competitor yeah. to others, and it's never a good thing. But you brought something new, yes, which so a lot of people have exactly, to, to, exactly, to copy. Your... Exactly. It wow. was, I wasn't also coming to do agriculture the way everybody does agriculture. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that we're doing something very different, something that was innovative, something that would remind us of change. And something that was also engaging because one of the biggest challenges that we have now mm -hmm. in the entire world is that you have uh, a lot of young people who've distanced themselves away from agriculture. That's right. But you realize that our population, our farming population is aging. Mm -hmm. Our parents can no longer farm to feed the growing population, mm -hmm. which is why now we are more or less shifting towards processed food. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, that's calling to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Human beings, you understand? Yeah. So we needed to find a way to bring the youth closer to agriculture. And uh, there were so many things that we needed to do. Wow. First of all, you had to rebrand the entire agricultural industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had to make people believe that it is pride to be an agriculturalist. Yeah. You know? uh, we had to make people believe that you don't have to wait to retire or to get to the age of 50, 60, 70 to get into agriculture. That's right. There's nothing you can do there. That's right. Why don't you do agriculture as a youth and then retire and anything else? You see, because we had to reverse that. That's Here, right. we rather work as a civil servant and then retire as a farmer. You get it. Why don't start at the farm and then retire the civil service as you want to as a teacher or any of those things? No, no, so no, that's no, no, what no, I no. wanted to bring in. And uh, so also the fact that, you know, if you haven't lived abroad, uh, moving back and doing farming shouldn't be something that is a disgrace. Yeah. You see, when I moved back, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I actually moved into my village. Okay. I stayed in the and village. And where's your village? In, in Bengui. Okay. I stayed in the village. I left okay. America straight into the village. Going back to your roots. Yes, I went to the village because I understood that if you had to do agriculture, you have to live with the farmers. That's right. You have to understand the farmers. Mm -hmm. You have to be with them, mm -hmm. you know. So, and the best place to have the farmers who could communicate with you was your own village where you can speak That's the language, right. you know, most of them saw you growing up. But even in the village, it was very difficult because people never understood. Like, how come yeah. this guy lives in America? And he's moved back to the village. Some thought I had been repatriated. Some thought I was in hiding. Some, yeah, people just could never believe because, you know, I mean, this is one in a million times where you see somebody yeah. drop out of pharmacy school, leave the U.S. I had a very good job in the U.S. That's right. Um, That's right. And I only did that job for three weeks in training. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if I stay long on this job, I'll get addicted to the paycheck, addicted to the lifestyle. Yeah everything and i said no i just had to interrupt all that leisure pleasure and i had That's to right. just move back so many things have actually happened to what you see here today wow. uh but again for me it's i don't expect everybody to go my route 
Yeah. Um, because it takes a lot of discipline, sacrifice, yeah. perseverance, and a lot of passion. Yeah. I think what we wanted to do was to create a stage where others can then take from there and go further. That's right. Uh, so we've been able to develop now with greenhouses a franchise system wherein, you know, uh, you can have a farm, we manage a farm, and then we assure the sales That's uh, right. from the farm. That's right. Uh, we have students... We have students that uh, we have trained, and those students, when we train them, we actually engage them on greenhouse farming. We yeah. get them to greenhouses, and then we can engage them, That's right. you know, with the greenhouse so they go forward. Again, we assure a market for them. Wow! Well, mm -hmm. Like now, when I see what you have established here, you know, in terms of you know the initial capital to put here, you know. It, it blows my mind. Did you get like, you know, a support like from the international agencies like World Bank, you know, to set up this? Because this is so mind blowing to see what you have done so far. Yeah, well, that's the question people always ask. But uh, I have not had any support. Okay. Um, not because they are not available, but I have not gone searching yet. Okay. Um, and it's because I believe that um, uh, whenever we start by going for these funding opportunities, we lose sight of the vision. Yeah. You know, because whoever pays the piper controls the tone. So <laughs> wherever you get money from, they'll tell you these are the results you want to see. That's right. That's and right. then you realize that whatever you came to do, it has to be tilted, yeah. you know, to fit, you know, the agenda yeah. which you are representing. Yeah. And uh, that's that was that was the concern. So now that we've been able to have a full proof of concept, mm -hmm. we've been able to establish greenhouses in six out of the ten regions we have in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Uh I think it is now we're now ready to be able to go out there and tell someone, hey, we've got over 500 greenhouses. Yeah. We produce over 500 kilograms of food every week. We we'll make X amount, you know, from sales. If we have Y amount, we can make Z amount and we can pay off investments or whatever wow. in X and X time. So wow. we, we are now looking at that. Okay. And I think the world is watching because you never know who is going to watch. And now, Okay, I read somewhere that 60% of land in Africa is arable land. So, and now a lot of young people are like migrating, you know. So what advice do you have for like for young people out there who just think that they can go and make life in Europe, of which the soil here is so productive and we can make, we can be billionaires from the soil. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the aspect of always telling you it's what they can do or what they should do, is very relative, you know. You can speak from here till you turn blue. When people's minds have been made up, they've already been made up. Mm -hmm. I think what we should do is actually focus on those who are here okay. and see what we can do together. Mm -hmm. When people have made up their minds to travel, they have to travel. Wow. You cannot even stop them. So I'm never trying to tell someone, don't travel. Okay. Travel, come back and tell us how it works. <laughs> <laughs> there are always new things you can learn, right? Yeah, exactly. You can come back and tell exactly. us something that we never learned, so it is always good. Mm -hmm. But for those who have no means to travel, for those who don't know what else to do, yeah. um, for those who are looking at agriculture as a potential avenue, uh, one, we have an academy yeah. where we train several individuals. Mm -hmm. um, and once you're trained, we place you on farm. Okay. Uh, so it's like a direct employment wow uh, there are those who actually come in uh with no monies and we actually offer them scholarships that's right with the goal that when they finish training they would have to work on a farm mm -hmm. at a reduced salary to the pay of their school that's right uh, we're actually creating a program right now with the, the group in the diaspora called i am cameroon okay that would find a way to have sponsors mm -hmm. who will sponsor students into our academy and That's then right. even to get them involved on farms or on greenhouse farms so we're looking at many many models uh myself uh, we are looking at maybe creating a refinance model okay. with greenhouses mm -hmm. um, so because we can guarantee the production we can guarantee the markets mm -hmm. um, we're getting to the point where we can be able to refinance the acquisition of a greenhouse, knowing that, okay, we'll take produce and we can pay off. So mm -hmm. we're coming up with several models. Wow. I think with time, we would have several of wow. such opportunities, and I'm sure we'll be able to cover many parts of the story. <laughs> wow. You know what, when you mentioned about living in the United States, I remember I studied in Wisconsin, you know, sustainable organic farming, horticultural landscape, and I've been to almost half of the United States. And coming back home, I had the same challenge, going back right to my village. But now it is so mind-blowing to see how my story has been illustrating a children's book. I am farmer yes, going and environmental yeah. movement in Cameroon just to let the world know that we can make it here. We Man. can make it. We can make it. We so, can make it. We can make it. You know, uh, 
Cameroon, like they say, or Africa still has a lot of challenges. Yeah. Uh, but these challenges, they are ones that have solutions. That's right. Uh, all we can do is to find solutions to them and implement them. That's all we're doing. So it's one little solution at a time. And this is what we're doing here in our family. That's right. So thank you very man, much. Man, it was nice having you on my channel. I'm so, man, the world needs to learn from people like you, man. This is mind-blowing. Hey, dear viewers, it was nice visiting one of the greatest entrepreneurs, not only in Cameroon, but in Africa, who is wow. changing the narratives of agriculture in Africa. Remember, Africa must be transformed. If Africa must be transformed, we need to get back to our roots and get back to the soil. We are, we are farmers. farmers. No, no farmers, farmer, no, no future. future. Peace and blessings. <laughs>